Hello everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how you can set up the depth of field effect in V-Ray for Cinema 4D. Now the scene that we're going to be working in is the one you see in front of you right now. And at the end of this tutorial, we're also going to do a little bit of a breakdown of the scene. All right. And so that's it for the intro. How about we go to work and we start setting things up? All right. Okay. So the first thing that we ought to do here is we ought to bring in a V-Ray physical camera. But now we already have a standard cinema for the camera all set up in our scene here, as you can see. So in this case, what you can do is you can right click on your existing cinema for the camera, uh, go under extensions here, V-Ray tags, and then just plop a V-Ray physical camera tag onto it. Okay. By doing that, you've turned this camera into a V-Ray physical camera. All right. Now, if by any chance you don't have any cameras in your scene yet, what you can then also do is you can just go under the V-Ray menu up here, go under cameras and just bring in a V-Ray physical camera in this way. And the end result is going to be exactly the same. There's no difference between these two. Uh, the only difference is that, you know, previously we had to add a tag to our camera. Whereas if we go with this workflow, we are we kind of create a standard cinema for the camera with a tag already applied to it. Now, just in case you're wondering, uh, the only difference between the two methods of creating a V-Ray physical camera is in the default settings with which the V-Ray physical camera is going to come in. So uh, if you're creating a V-Ray physical camera through the V-Ray menu, it's going to have slightly different default settings than, uh, for example, when you're uh, bringing in a tag and you're dropping it on top of a standard Cinema 4D camera. That's the only difference. Now, with that explained, uh, let's maybe take a second and let's uh, take a look at how our VFB change now that we're looking at our scene through the V-Ray physical camera. So as you can see, the exposure uh, changed, right? And so let's take a look at why that happened. So to understand what is happening here, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our V-Ray physical camera settings uh, by clicking on the tag here. And then we're going to focus on this color and exposure sort of compartment here. Okay. And all of what we're going to talk about now is also going to tie real nicely into uh, when we're going to start setting up our depth of field effect. But for now, let's just, let's just maybe focus solely on the color and exposure modes here. Okay. So once you bring in, or once you create a V-Ray physical camera, uh, your exposure mode is automatically going to be set to physical exposure. Okay. Which means that the exposure, uh, settings for this camera are going to be controlled by playing with the aperture parameters here. So in other words, uh, this is how you would control a camera in the real world as well. So for example, if you want to make the image darker, you would maybe up the F number, right? That's going to affect the exposure. Uh, then you can also play with the ISO parameter. So if you up this one, it's going to make things brighter. Okay. So this is a very, very sort of uh, real world esque workflow uh, that you would see on a real world camera, right? You dial in your F number, then you play with the ISO, et cetera, et cetera. You do also have this shutter speed parameter here, but this one's not really going to apply for us because we're not going to be doing any motion blur in this tutorial. Okay. Right. So that's how exposure works when it's at the physical exposure, but then you can also switch it to these two other modes here. So let's switch it to exposure value first. Okay. And so now, as you can see, our ISO parameter got grayed out, uh, but we can still play with the F number parameter. But if we do so, you're going to be able to see that, you know, the exposure doesn't really change anymore. And that is because now our exposure for this camera is going to be solely controlled uh, with this exposure value parameter down here. So if we lower it, things are going to get brighter. If we up it, things are going to get darker. Okay, so that's how exposure works when you're in the exposure value mode. Now, what you can also do here is you can change the exposure mode to no exposure. Okay, that's going to uh, gray out that exposure value parameter, and it's also going to gray out the ISO, ISO parameter. And if you play with the F number, as you probably kind of guessed, uh, the exposure is really not going to get affected. Okay, so when you're in the no exposure mode, basically what this means is that none of the settings uh, in your uh, camera, none of your camera settings are going to affect your camera's exposure. Okay. Uh, so in this sort of mode here, the primary and pretty much the only way to control the exposure um, of your camera or of your image uh, is by playing with the exposure layer right here, sort of like this. Okay. Now, uh, this doesn't mean that when you're in all these other modes here, that this parameter is not 
working it, it's working just fine but when you're in the no exposure mode this is pretty much the only way that you're going to be adjusting or tweaking the exposure um, for your rendered image all right now one thing that we would really like to emphasize here is that uh, no matter the exposure mode you go with you will always get a realistic re result okay so uh, no matter the exposure mode that you go with you will always end up with the same image okay it's just a different way of getting there it's just it allows you to tweak different parameters in a different fashion but the end result is always going to be the same okay okay so with that explained uh let's take a look at how you can turn on the depth of field effect itself okay so to enable the depth of field effect uh, what you want to do here is and it's real simple you just want to go under the depth of field and motion blur menu and just toggle the depth of field effect to on okay just like that now you're going to be able to see that the foreground here is going to be out of focus for us okay so it's that simple to turn on Okay, cool. So now that we know how to turn the depth of field effect on, uh, let's take a look at some of the basic ways on how you can control it. So the parameter that you're going to be primarily concerned with when it comes to controlling the shallowness or deepness of your depth of field effect is the F number parameter, just like it is in the real world. So pay attention to what's going to happen to the foreground here when we start lowering the F number. So if we lower it down to three, you're going to be able to see that the foreground is going to become blurrier and blurrier. And the same is going to happen to the background, although it's a little bit harder to see here because the background is kind of far away and doesn't really have any sort of noticeable details that we can appreciate there. Okay, now if we up the F number, well then uh, the uh, depth of field effect is going to become less shallow, it's going to become deeper, and so uh, the out of focus areas are going to become less blurry. Okay, so this parameter here works exactly as it does in the real world. But now let's tie this workflow into the color and exposure modes here that we talked about earlier. Okay, so right now, as you can see, we're in the no exposure exposure mode. Okay. And so in this mode, if we change the F number, if we remember, right, the exposure of our rendered image is not going to change at all. Right. Where, uh, but as you've noticed, the depth of field effect is going to change. Right. And so this makes setting up the depth of field effect rather easy. You dial in your exposure and then you just play with the F number until you get the depth of field sort of result that you'd like and the same holds true for the exposure value mode here you dial in your exposure value say let's uh, go with a value of nine yeah that seems bright enough and now we can just play with the f number until we get the depth of field looking right right so it's a pretty straightforward workflow but then if you go with the physical exposure mode well then now if you'll remember changing the f number here is going to affect your exposure as well the exposure in your camera right and so when you're in the physical exposure mode here the setting up the depth of field becomes this sort of dance uh, of uh, joy if you will between setting up the iso parameter correctly and setting up the f number parameter correctly okay just like it would in the real world so for example, if you go with a lower F number value here, okay, you're probably going to have to lower the ISO as well. So let's lower it down to 100. Uh, maybe it's still a little bit too bright. Maybe we'll lower it down to 50. Oh no, that's, you know, too dark, etc., etc. So all of these uh, modes here don't affect how, uh, how realistic the depth of field effect is. They just affect uh, the workflow on how you kind of dial it in right so with the physical exposure mode uh, it takes uh, tweaking another knob here to get things looking exactly like you want them to whereas with the exposure value sort of workflow here uh, it becomes rather um, a, a little bit more straightforward you dial in your exposure value right so let's go with a exposure value of um, well that's too bright let's say with eight um, and then you know to dial in the depth of field strength you know you just play with the f number etc etc right okay so that's how you control the strength of the depth of field effect but uh, let's take a look at how you can control the focus distance as well so that's what we're going to be taking a look at next here so there's a couple of different ways on how you can set the focus distance for your camera and arguably the easiest one is to just simply hover uh, with your mouse in the vfb over the spot that you would like to be in focus right click on it and hit the set focus point button and just like that you've set the focus of your camera to that particular point right this is really easy really intuitive to use and you know it just requires basically two clicks 
All right. Now, the way that this parameter works, sorry, the way that this functionality works is, is basically it sets the focus distance uh, inside your standard Cinema 3D camera to, you know, uh, whatever you've clicked essentially, right? So if you click in the foreground, you can see that the focus distance value here is going to change. Okay. And so this brings us to the other way that you can dial in the focus distance here. And this is sort of the standard Cinema 4D way. You can just type in the values in here, or you can use the eyedropper tool here, and you can just use it in the viewport to set the focus distance this way. Okay. So very similar functionality to the VFB one, although this one, you know, only works in the viewport. And you do also have to go inside your uh, camera's parameter here, locate the focus distance parameter, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, so that there's another way uh, to, fo uh, to set focus for your camera, and that is with the focus object sort of functionality here. Um, and again, this is all standard Cinema 3D functionality. So what you can do here is you can just use the eyedropper tool, for example, select the tire that you want to focus on or the object that you want to did you want to be in focus right and now if you move your camera around well then that object is always going to be in focus all right we're almost at the tail end of this tutorial uh, but before we conclude it before we start concluding things let's do a bit of a breakdown of the scene that you've seen in the intro animation okay so here is our scene and as you can see it's a rather simple scene so we have our floor object we have some tires scattered on it and then we have some sort of an interesting background that we've kind of cobbled together here we have three different lights in our scene this is our key light this is our background light and this is a bit of a helper light here that just kind of illuminates this area a little bit um a, a little bit better okay and as far as the actual scene itself goes that's pretty much it now if we check our camera settings here OK, uh, you'll be able to see that we're using the no exposure exposure mode. And this is just a personal preference of mine, because this way, you know, we can uh, very easily dial in the strength of the depth of field effect uh, without, you know, affecting the exposure. OK, now, because we are using the no exposure mode, uh, the way that I'm controlling the exposure here is with the exposure layer. OK, so as you can see, I just dialed it down a little bit. All right. OK, uh, then uh, if we go under the depth of field and motion blur menu, we're using all default settings except for the bitmap aperture. Now, this is a bit more of an advanced um, functionality here, but it is really cool and we would really encourage you to uh, play with it. Let's maybe just go to frame zero here to better demonstrate what it does. OK, and so basically, if we take a look at these bokeh right here, OK, you're going to be able to see that they uh, kind of mimic our uh, aperture here. Okay. And so, uh, with this functionality, you can really kind of fine tune your depth of field effect. And again, it is a bit more of an advanced sort of functionality, but we do highly encourage you to play around with it because this thing really allows you to customize and fine tune your depth of field. Look, now if we disable the bitmap aperture, the custom bitmap, bitmap aperture that we have here, well, now, as you can see that bokeh, uh, looks more like your, you know, your typical standard bokeh. Okay. Right. And the rest of the settings here are just default settings. OK, now uh, another interesting thing that we could maybe uh, talk about here is how we're uh, controlling the focus distance. Right. This whole thing is animated. And uh, to make that sort of the, the process of animating things easier, we are using a uh, a null as our focus distance target. OK, so this is the null. And as you can see, it's animated to move. Right. And the way that it's linked to our camera is if you just go into your camera settings under object here, you can see that you have this focus object input field here. And in here is where you can link your uh, your target. In our case here, this is our null. OK. So basically, that means that whenever that null is at, that's the area that's going to be in focus. All right. Cool. Uh, now, one thing uh, that uh, we can also talk about here is the fact that uh, the way that we've animated this null is it basically just moves in one direction, just away from the camera. OK, and our ultimate uh, sort of focus point here is the center of this rim. OK, but if we take a look at that anim at the animation, uh, we're now centered on that rim, but the, uh, the null is going to overshoot a little bit. Then it's going to pull back. It's going to overcompensate a bit, but then it's ultimately going to settle on our um, ultimate 
focus point, right? So we've done this so that things look a little bit more interesting um, and maybe just a little bit more realistic because when you're manually uh, setting the focus on your camera, sometimes what you tend to do is uh, you kind of uh, maybe don't hit it correctly the first time, then you try to overcompensate a little bit, but then ultimately you kind of get it right, right? So maybe what we could also do here is if you bring up our curves here, uh, so let me just uh, clear some space here. There we go. If we bring out the curves for our camera uh, target, for our focus distance target here for that null, okay, you can see that it's just animated to move on on its X axis. And, um, you know, it starts moving at frame 60. It starts moving and at frame 150, it kind of hits that uh, you know, that focus point where we ultimately want to be at. But then we're overshooting a little bit, right? And then we're also overcompensating a little bit. So we're kind of, the curve kind of goes like this then, right? So it overshoots and then kind of overcompensates, but ultimately it lands on the spot where we want it to be at. And, you know, that's just a little bit of that artistic or maybe you could even argue realistic addition to the animation. And with that, well, that's pretty much the breakdown of the entire scene. We really hope you've liked it. Okay, and so with that, we are concluding this tutorial. We hope you've learned something new. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.